guys welcome back to april prep yeah we're doing a lot we we're doing a lot in today's video we have lots of cleaning when i tell y'all i clean this house i clean this house like i've never done before genuinely i think this is like the most i've ever gone in on this house um we have grocery shopping we have a lot of fun things planned so anyway i'm just hopping in because the cleaning montage is pretty long i feel like oh i also do like my entire plant care routine that's really fun too um anyway so i just yeah the cleaning montage is really long so i just want to pop in and say hello to the video welcome to my channel um and now we can get into it
Gonna continue cleaning. It's the next night. Um, and listen to Wool on Audible. I still have seven hours, seven and a half hours of this, so I'm gonna try to get through some of it and finish cleaning this house. Yes. Ah, rest it. Hey. Do not break it. Okay. No, Hopefully it's not, um, but I still have so much I need to do for this whole like monthly reset. Today is officially April 1st, it's 11.17, and I'm hoping that I can get this video up tomorrow, um, and today we'll finish like all of our reset stuff. Honestly, we went grocery shopping, we cleaned, um, what else did I do? I don't know. Um, next thing I need to do though is water my plants and treat them, because I found something on one of the leaves of my plants over there. And I just cut the leaf off and threw it away. But they're like those, what are those like really flat bugs? And they like suck the nutrients out of your leaves. And you don't really notice they're there unless you know what to look for. But they kill your plant over time. And your plant will die and you'll be like, what the heck happened? And you'll, you know, it's the bugs sucking the like nutrients out of the leaves. That's why I always do one of these. Like I love just checking making sure there's nothing yucky under there because that's where they like to be. Um, so anyway, I need to take all my plants outside. I don't even want to do this. I need to take them outside and I need to treat all of them because it's spring and you know, it's when the spiders start coming and they love to live in your plants. So I just want to water them outside and do the neem oil treatment that I always do. I moved all my plants over here so that I could transport them outside easier. Let's count how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, 
27 and then 28. I've definitely had some casualties this year or the past year. I've probably lost like two or three plants, but 20 something plants is more than enough. It's a lot of work. Okay, let's take these outside. I just watered all of them and now I think I'm gonna add some fertilizer to them for spring. I'm gonna do the worm castings um, and just sprinkle it on top of all of them. I think that's just all I'm gonna do this year. I don't know if I normally do liquid fertilizer, do I? I can't remember. Oh, I did used to do liquid fertilizer. I don't know, but I think I'm just gonna do the worm castings for right now. Okay, now I'm gonna spray with horticultural oil instead of neem oil because it's already in the spray bottle and it's just easier right now. Come on, I'm gonna have one spray. No! You want in? There you go. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna combine these three plants into one because they're kind of sparse. And this is honestly too much soil for this little guy. So I think I'm gonna put all these in this, into one. This one is honestly on her last leg because it I think this is just like way too much soil for this little this little girl. This way it's just a lot more full. Oh, this had one of those like nets around it, I think. Right? Like that's what this is, like that net that they put around it sometimes. And it can like, can't that restrict it from growing? I wonder if that's why it's like struck, was struggling in there because this plant it used to be like a good size bigger and it's just like shrunk over time, but it's not like dead. And I feel like I take care of it pretty good and I'm like, why is it not growing? That might've been why. And then I'm just gonna add some of the soil to the top of that, push it down a little bit. And I feel like that just looks so much better. So there we go. And then this is good soil. I just made this last year, actually. I make my own like soil mixture. So whatever of my plants are low on soil, I'm just gonna add this to that. So this is the extra soil. So like, see how this one is kind of low? So I'm just gonna like add that. Faith got me this one for my birthday and the soil's just like pretty low. So I'm gonna add that to that too. So that used up all that, which is great. And then I save these for my propagations. It's time to update the notion. Um, so let's do that. I read three books in March. That's sad. So we're just gonna update that to three. That's crazy, I can't believe I only read three books. I read Check and Mate. I read Emily Wilde's Insight. Lopedia um, <laughs> Fairies and then I also read Oh Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is by Heather Fawcett. I think that's how you spell it. Check and Mate is romance, Once Upon a Broken Heart is fantasy. And Emily Bell is fantasy. I don't feel like looking at how many pages are in these books. 
Okay, let's just go to Goodreads. It's easy. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Wow. 250 or 352 pages for Emily Wilde. Like 416 pages for Once Upon a Broken Heart. I bit the flick out of my tongue on the side, and every time it talk, I talk, it like hits my teeth. It hurts so bad. I've never, I don't like ever bit my tongue that hard. There was like a chunk that was like hanging. That's how hard I bit it. It was like blood in the mouth immediately. Now I like to save all of the covers of the books that I read so that I can add them to here. I'm so out of like going back to school completely threw me off, unfortunately. So I just feel so out of it. One of you guys left a comment and showed me there's like a way that I could do these to where I think like the entire picture shows up. I need to go back and find that comment because I was like, wait, I'm legitimately gonna do that. I feel like I just don't have any brain space right now. Okay, so that's done for right now until I go back and figure out how to like make the pictures all be in one. I like to update the videos that I uploaded from the month before. So I'm gonna go to my channel. I also did not upload very much at all in March. I posted, I think two videos. Um, okay, so I posted my February reading wrap up, which is that on this list. Uh, wrap up plus March TBR jar. I'm gonna put that right here. That's finished, check. That went up in, oh, actually I've uploaded three videos in March. That's actually not that bad. Goal is like two to three videos anyway. So that's kind of, that kind of works. Then I uploaded my March reset. Then I uploaded my, I vlogged my first week back to school. Check, okay. Um, I feel like I don't really have that many other things to do. I normally plan my videos for the month here, so I can probably add those in too. And you guys kind of get like a little sneak peek at maybe the videos you can look forward to that will be posted this month. Potentially. Potentially. These are just like my goals or videos I'm going to work on and then we'll see how it ends up working. We'll reset. Probably upload my April TBR video on maybe Friday. 15th, I'm gonna upload probably like a cozy reading vlog. This will be the vlog from when I went to the cabin and all of that. That'll be that video. Maybe my May reset. I might upload, upload that the week after, and then this week I'll upload um, like a finishing or reading all cold, like reading. Reading. I can't, my brain's not working. Reading books from series I've started. There's a better way to word that. I can't think right now though. I'm, 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 I'm withering away. Okay, I think that's probably all we're going to get to. Well, and then I'll probably post my May reset. I might even do like my May TBR here. Okay, so I think that's, we'll just keep that like that. Good. I don't, I don't have any like books that I'm like, I'm itching to go buy. So that's kind of nice. I feel like normally at the beginning of the month, everyone's posting their like wrap ups and stuff and i get like major fomo and i need to go book shopping so anyway that's the that's the notion update i was waiting for my plants to dry they're just like sitting out there um but it looks all dry so i'm gonna start bringing them all back in
upload the, okay, ignore me because I just filmed my April TBR. So that's why I have this on. Um, now I need to add the next book for the book club, the book next books so we can vote. Um, and if you guys ever have, if you're in the book club and you ever have any books you want me to like add to the list, let me know because I will take all the help I can get. So Naya said Five Feet Apart or Archer's Voice. So I'm gonna do Archer's Voice. I'm trying to pick more standalone books, but honestly, you guys always vote for the series, which I don't mind at all. I honestly love it. Somebody said The Housemaid, a fun read. I read that. I read that earlier this year, I think. Um, I don't know what Five Feet Apart is. Oh, Cole Sprouse is in the major motion picture. Wow, best young adult fiction of 2019. Oh my gosh, this is fun. In this moving story, two teens fall in love with just one minor complication. They can't get within five feet of each other. Wait, that's so funny. Okay, we'll do five feet apart too. That's fun. Part. Okay, so now we have three options. Now I just need one more. I honestly feel like we've been reading a lot of YA. Our last three book picks were YA. So I always just add in Y options because that's like what always wins. Kind of want to do the Midnight Library though because that's really fun and I feel like that would be fun to discuss. The hardest part is doing, I am like, I feel so boomer trying to use Discord. Like I understand the basic functions, but a lot of the other functions I don't understand. Like you have to, in order to do a poll, you have to like use a bot, I guess. Um, and I don't like how it says like upgrade to premium or whatever. I don't like how it says that, but I don't know, like, I don't know what to use. So, so I just continue. It just is kind of looks bulky and I don't love that, but I also, I have not looked up how to do it. Okay. Then I just make sure I spelled everything correctly. Okay. And then there it is. We wait for... Everyone vote. It's time for our fourth TBR video of the year because it's April, right? January, March, yes. Fourth video, fourth TBR jar video of the year. I'm so excited. Um, basically, if you don't know what this is, I just have a jar full of prompts and based on the prompts, I would choose a book from my TBR. So I am um, embarrassed to say that basically most of these books on my shelves are books I have not read yet. The books I have read, I keep on a different shelf. But anyway, most of these I haven't read yet and based on the prompt, I will pick a book and it's gonna be super fun. I pick eight normally. Yeah, I think that's all you need to know. So let's get going. Last month, I went back to school and so I did not get to very many books on my TBR at all. But I think that now that I'm more in a routine with school, I will be able to read more books from said TBR. Um, so my TBR will be eight books from here and then the ninth book will be whatever our book club book pick was. Um, and sometimes it's actually a book from my like physical TBR is what gets, ends up getting voted on. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, eight, nine books is my total TBR. I'm nervous. I actually am so nervous. Okay. Oh, shorter than 200 pages. I am nervous because some of these prompts are kind of out there in like having my husband pick a book or like going to Barnes and asking a stranger a, a book recommendation. Um, so that's why I kind of get nervous before I pick because I'm like, Ugh. some months I'm like, yeah, let's go do that. And then like, I'm kind of feeling shy today. So I'm like, I don't really want to do that. So hopefully I don't get that one. Okay, shorter than 200 pages. Let's really assess the situation. I know for sure a book I really want to read is The Fake Mate. Definitely not shorter than 200 pages though. Okay, White Knights by, I don't know how to say that. Dos, Dos, Dostovsky. I don't know how to say this. I'm so sorry. But I think we're gonna go with White Knights. What, what is this about? I don't know. A sentimental story from the diary of a dreamer. I'm excited. And also the text is pretty large. So I feel like because it's large text, but it also might be kind of classic vibes, it might, Take me a second to get through it. And I feel like I'm gonna annotate it and it's gonna be like a fun little story that I can enjoy. I feel like it's probably gonna be like cozy vibes. Be introspective because it's like a diary. That's exciting. 
book two. Small town romance. Wait, okay. Um, I actually have some books over here on this shelf I kind of want to look at first. Because my romance, honestly, I feel like I've read a lot of romance this year. So I don't have very much. Like this top shelf is the only romance that I have pretty much. So I don't know if any of those are small town. They probably are, but I just don't know. But first I want to look over here. Okay, actually I don't think what I thought was happening. So I have Heartless by Elsie Silver over there. And I know that's supposed to be like cowboy, right? But I don't, I didn't read on the back that it's like small town. And then I also have the Addicted Calloway Sisters series. And I know that's romance, but it didn't say like small town. So if you guys have read those, are any of those small town? because I don't know, I don't know what other option I have. Um, oh, I think this is Small Town. And I've been really wanting to read a Mariana Zapata book. It says Aurora de la Tora, or Aura to her friends, knows moving back to Pag Pagosa Springs, Colorado, a place that was once home and is now full of bittersweet memories of her late mother, isn't gonna be easy. Starting your whole life over probably isn't supposed to be. And it says that Mariana Zapata is lives in a small town in Colorado. I'm betting she lives in Pagosa, Pagosa Springs, Colorado, which is a small town. So honestly, I'm just gonna go with this. This is a standalone, right? I don't know, but Mariana Zapata books are supposed to be the slow burn of all slow burns, not spicy. And I am so excited because everyone loves her writing and the books are pretty long too. So I feel like you get to stay with the characters for a long time. This is like 590 pages or something. Okay, book number three. Okay, title that starts with the same letter as the month. So it's April 1st when I'm filming this. So A, I have a little life, but I'm sorry, I'm not gonna sign up for that this month. Like there's just no way. Well, a Man Called Ove, that was actually on my TBR last month and I didn't get to it. But I still wanna read that. So that's a good option, honestly. Let's look on my fantasy side. I don't know why I never go here first. Oh, A Tempest of Tea. Okay, I might go with The Tempest of Tea because I genuinely don't know what other book I have that starts with A. I think the cover is so pretty. I know that there's vampires in it and I think that it's kind of like she's tempting the vampires. There's like a speakeasy. Kind of in my mind, I am picturing a little bit of Vampire Diaries. Obviously any book that has vampires, I'm like, oh, it's like Vampire Diaries. Um, kind of like Vampire Diaries, but also Peaky Blinders in the way that it's kind of like grungy. I haven't even watched, I watched like two episodes of Peaky Blinders, but those, the vibes of that, I feel like remind me of this. But yeah, it says her prestigious tea room transforms into an illegal blood house by night, catering to the vampires feared by society. I, I might drop everything I'm doing today and start that. I love vampires. Okay, let's pick another one. This is, this is good. I'm so excited to read that. A dystopian book. This is my struggle every month because I never really know what, I, I never really fully get what dystopian means. Um, so, okay, I think the selection is dystopian. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And I've really been wanting to read this because I literally own all of the books and I would love to like, if I could read the entire selection series, all these books would be off the shelf. And I feel like that would just look really good to me. So honestly, we might do that. The only other dystopian I have is like Hunger Games, the Shatter Me series, Divergent, which honestly I am kind of like, I could get into Divergent this month. I feel like I could. I feel like I would love it. Should I do Divergent or the selection? Okay, honestly, I think I'm gonna go with the selection because it's smaller, I feel like it's not as daunting, and I've been wanting to start this so badly. I feel like I would have loved these when I was 12. I can't believe I didn't know they existed. Book number five, least favorite genre. Now, why would you do this to me? Now, I'm not gonna say like literally my least favorite genre. I'm gonna say my least favorite genre in the sense of like, right now, I think that I'm more in a fantasy mood. So that means like my least favorite genre right now would probably be like romance. Or actually what probably is my least favorite right now is like mystery thriller. Because our book club pick last month was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I never got around to reading it because I was obsessed with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. So I might have to pick a suspense horror vibe. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna pick Butcher and Blackbird. This is kind of cheating because I actually really am looking forward to reading this so much, but I just haven't picked it up because I'm just not really in the mood, but 
This is kind of my, I found a loophole, if you will. This is about two serial killers that are like in a relationship. Two serial killers that kill other serial killers. So it's literally, why can't my brain is not working today? What is that show? You guys know what I'm talking about. Dexter, Dexter. I used to be obsessed with Dexter. I actually wanna rewatch that now that I bring it up. My two shows that I wanna currently rewatch, America's Next Top Model and Dexter. <laughs> That's just the kind of person I am. Serial killers that are in a relationship that kill other serial killers. Yes. Book six, one word title. I feel like I might've gotten this one last month too, but I don't really remember. Okay, hey, do I, I don't even know if I have a one word title. But you got a friend in me. Oh, Bloodmarked. That's an option. We also have Light Lark by, what's her name? Aster, Lauren Aster, Alex Aster. Oh, we have Sorrowland by River Solomon. I've been wanting to read this so bad. This is a pregnant woman who was in a very strict religious compound, like literally a cult, and she escapes. Finding the truth will mean uncovering not only the secrets of the compound she fled, but also the violent history of America that produced it. I just, yes. Also black author, period. Let's, let's just do that one, that's fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, book seven, wait, yeah, book seven. Please be a good one. This one's big, okay. Red cover. I don't know why that's such a large piece of paper just to say red cover. Why did I pick red cover? Why did I even write red cover when I don't even have like any? Oh, I have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. It might be the month, guys. It might be the month where I finally read that. Oh, or we have Ruthless Vows. That's pretty red, I feel like. I mean, I have other red ones, but they're the second book in a series and like, obviously I'm not gonna do that to myself. I do have Red Rising, which has some red on it. I don't think I'm ready to commit to Red Rising though, honestly. The Housemaid's Secret. I honestly feel like I could totally pick this and it would not be cheating, but I don't really feel like reading this either. Like, I'm just not in like a mystery thriller mood right now. So I think I'm gonna go with Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. That's fun, cause I feel like, okay, okay. Oh, her divorce is just about finalized. Her brother's running out of time to, time to find a kidney donor. Okay, I mean, it sounds, it sounds a little interesting. I don't know. I feel like, do they write letters to each other? I think that might be my favorite part of the book. I'm just foreshadowing. So, red cover. There we go. Are you talking to me, babe? What's up? Okay. Okay, book eight. Last one. General fiction. Um, all of my general fiction is like in this area. You know what I might choose? I'm trying to think. I'm not, I have not really been in an introspective reading mood. I think because I have to read so much nonfiction for school and I'm taking history and philosophy. So there's already a lot of introspection into the world, into how we think going on in my day to day that I'm like, I want fairies, I want vampires, I want the furthest thing from the real world to escape into. So I feel like I don't want to pick a book that I know I'm gonna love, but I'm reading it at the wrong time, you know? I would pick Green Dot by Madeline Gray because this is supposed to be for the Normal People by Sally Rooney lovers. And I loved Normal People by Sally Rooney. Like that is the kind of book I want to write in the future. Like absolutely loved it. But I feel like if I read this when I'm not really in the mood, it might, you know, taint my view of it. So I'm gonna save this. I think I'm gonna save this because I, I'm really excited about this, but I just don't think I'm there right now. Ooh, I think The House in the Cerulean Sea is general fiction. Ooh, we have The Midnight Library. <gasps> Okay, wait, I think I might read this. I think we're gonna do The Midnight Library. She basically is in a library and when she opens books, it is different paths of her life that she could have gone down and basically what would have happened. I think that is such a fun concept. Honestly, a concept I wish I would have thought about writing about. You know, I, I love that. I love that idea so much. Paths we didn't take, other lives we might have led. But what if you were given a chance to fix your past? Enter The Midnight Library. That's so fun. Wait, this is another one where I kind of just want to drop everything I'm doing and start this right now, which I'm surprised because I have been, this is honestly kind of giving fantasy vibes because she's like transported to the midnight library and it's giving kind of like magical, oh, is this called magical realism? <laughs> Guys, I'm, I'm sorry, I am, 
not well mentally. Um, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that was eight. Let's see what we got. Okay, here are the books that we have for April. White Knights, Butcher and Blackbird, The Selection, All Roads Lead Here, The Midnight Library, Yours Truly, Sorrow Land, and A Tempest of Tea. I'm really excited. I honestly feel like I get excited over every monthly TBR, but this probably has been, gosh, my best one of the year because it's all the genres I'm into right now. And then the ones that I'm not really into, I feel like I found a little loophole. And so this is like my dream TBR, honestly, like a little bit of everything. And I feel like my TBR has helped me so much because the shelves can be very daunting. And when it's like, okay, time to pick a new book, it can be like, wow, there's so many options. And this just helps to narrow it down and makes my reading month just feel like oh, it's just a small, a small bite. And then I put all of these on my bookshelf in my office. So anyway, that's, that's the TBR for April. Just about ready to wrap up this video, but there's one last thing I have to do in order to feel like I'm properly prepped for April, and that is taking my vitamins and things for the first time this month. I ordered some Symbiotica supplements. Uh, like a couple weeks ago um i really like taking them they're matcha that's the matcha i use and i love the orange but i've never bought these before and i had one the other day and it was really 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 hard to finish and this is like a pretty small pack i just from here I don't know if I could do it again. I've been putting it off and like I, I want to finish the pack. But oh my goodness, these are super greens with chlorophyll. But it's supposed to be a citrus lime flavor. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, I put it in my energy drink because, hold on, hey boys. Um, Alani's are very flavorful. So I was like, it'll be fine. Like, uh, It was significantly better, but it was still kind of kind of a struggle like see it's it's liquidy but it's kind of thick and it's there's a lot in here it's actually a lot honestly it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot okay 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 it doesn't smell bad though let me i'm gonna i'm gonna do a taste test this is going into another Alani, but it's only filled, filled, only filled to like right here. This is, I think I did orange, orange kiss Alani today. And it turns green inside here. Can you tell it's green? It's green. Oh, I mean, you could definitely taste it. Um, but if you just like drink it quickly, you know Okay, actually I could do that. It's not bad at all and then these I Just take I just drink it from here. These just taste like me too It just tastes like sunny D and they're much more liquidy the greens are more Thick when you just have it by itself. It's kind of hard to finish See, that one's easy. The greens are scary. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I can get used to that. I can get used to that. It's not that bad. Um, you know what it is? I should have never taken the chlorophyll ones by themselves because it has traumatized me. And it's like, I can, I'm scared, you know? But if I would have just had it like this the first time, I would have been like, oh my gosh, guys, they're so good. Like, don't even worry about it. But because I remember that first experience, I'm scarred. Okay, I'm also going to take my vitamins. I um, was taking the Dr. Brighton supplements, 
Um, and then I started working with Ritual and I'm not currently working with them. I just have them still. I just got a new delivery of these and I forgot how much I genuinely just love these. Like so simple there's like a little bit of a minty coating um and i love the dr brighton ones when i'm experiencing like pms issues period issues like excess cramping when i just feel like my hormones are super off but i've been feeling really really great lately so i feel like i don't need to take such an intense supplement regimen and i can just go back to my multivitamin vitamin and then i take my prebiotic or this is symbiotic so it's prebiotic probiotic and postbiotic and you can take them on into your stomach it's so easy with the dr brighton ones um you cannot take those on an empty stomach because you will be sick okay and it's just it's it's more of a high maintenance routine but it, it just depends what you need i feel like right now i'm very healthy i've been working out a lot um we have been, we changed our entire diet at the new year, eating at home like at least six times a week. And that has like made me feel so much better. Um, so yeah, this is, this is where I'm at right now. And it's nice just having to take three. Because the Dr. Brighton ones, you have to take them um, morning, afternoon, night. And it's probably, I was taking probably like seven to 10 pills a day. And it's just very intense, but it does work. So it really just depends what you need, where you're at in life. If I ever feel like my hormones are kind of going in and out after pregnancy is when I would take those, going off birth control, that's when I would like take that set. But I'm feeling good, I'm feeling healthy, I'm feeling balanced. So this is where I'm at now. Three months on my monthly reset videos i always include us going to barnes and like buying books that are on my wish list except i didn't go to barnes this time because i just went book shopping i think in the last video i posted but i did place an online order i figured we could open it together i've never purchased from barnes online if i buy books online i always normally buy them from amazon or like blackwells if i want like a special specific cover so let's see what condition these are in i'm nervous i don't even really remember what i got first book looks good if he had been with me the second book in this little series just came out but i was like i kind of want to just try reading the first one first the text is huge on it though which is nice autumn and finn used to be inseparable but then something changed or they changed now they do their best to ignore each other Autumn has her boyfriend and a close-knit group of friends. Finn has become that boy at school that everyone wants to be around. There's a growing, nagging thought that maybe things could have been different between them. Maybe they should be together. And as time passes, Autumn realizes that she might not get another chance to make things right before it's too late. Aw, sweet, authentic love story. I feel like I would have loved something like this when I was in junior high, because I'm pretty sure this is YA. And the second book, everybody says, just makes them cry so hard. So I'm excited to read this and see what I think. Next book I got, really guys, I don't remember what I got. Um, Paper Princess by Erin Watt. I'm so good this. Each royal boy is magnetic than the last, but none as captivating as Reed Royal, the boy who is determined to send her back to the slum she came from. Reed doesn't want her. He, said she, he says she doesn't belong with the royals. He might be right. I love like give me royals give me royal family give me love give me drama i love i can't wait anything with royals just kind of reminds me of bridgerton okay then i got this classic because this is like going popping off right now obviously it's classic so i'm pretty sure it's always been popping off uh but this is the count of monte cristo um, but it is really like kind of messed up on the corner so i kind i think i will probably take this back and get um the one that looks nice actually um but i know there's like an abridged this is guys this is literally a break there's an abridged version and on the barnes and noble website is literally archaic i wish they would update it um and it doesn't say if this was the abridged version or not i mean it's literally 
1300 pages so we'll see i need to like look into this and make sure it's not the abridged version but this is apparently like the classic book of revenge wrongful imprisonment and adventure i'm like so so excited for this like apparently this story has it all okay the stolen air by holly black and the prisoner's throne i saw Haley fam really loved this book and i was like oh i haven't even read the first one i don't think so i got the first one and the second one and i'm pretty sure i'm gonna like them because i feel like mine and Haley fam's reading tastes are very similar we normally like read books the same we're like reading the same books i also got the new fourth wing book i can't remember what is that series called the empyrean yeah the empyrean series um i loved the first book did not really love the second book and i was like honestly we're gonna try for a third if i don't like the third i'm not gonna continue with the rest of the books because i think there's gonna be five total i honestly feel like fourth wing could have just been a standalone book and it would have killed it like it would have just been great but i'm still interested to see how the story how the story goes from here anyway this is my book haul I really wish them this was I really wish this one wasn't messed up because then it would be perfect, but can't have it all. Okay, I'm gonna end the video here now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys like the reset videos or if you'd rather me do like a reading vlog type video instead of the reset videos. Let me know what you want. I'm I'm here to serve you guys. I'm here to serve the people. But regardless, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, leave a comment down below give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, um, and I will see you guys in the next one.